Hello. We're here today with Golda from Dimmu Borgia, and uh, we're in Camden on this nice rainy evening, and uh, we're going to interview uh, Golda just after having heard their new album, which was quite an experience, as you were here. So, hi man. Hello. Nice to have you here. Um, first question um, is about how long it took to record the album, because your, your previous albums all had like a two year gap between them, but this one took three years, which for fans was probably quite tough, um, kind of waiting that extra year for the album. So I was wondering like why it took, like what, what, was, what was going on, like why did we have to wait a little bit longer? Uh, well, first of all, Dimmen Borger is not like a band that releases album every year. Uh, at least two, three years I think is more appropriate for uh, Dimmen Borger. And uh, we always been like against bands that release albums after albums every year because it's you know really like to keep it a bit mysterious. So uh, you know that's probably the main reason for it. But we also we don't want to rush any product. We would like to work hard on each album and don't want to release it before we're very happy with it. So that was the main reason for it. So it's all about quality. Yeah. And yeah, the, the new album was pretty awesome. So yeah, thank that's you. kind of that's pretty evident. Thanks. Um, another kind of hot point, I guess, amongst fans is that um, you had the dismissal of like two members last year. And I was yeah. firstly, I was wondering if if you're in a position to like comment on that at all and tell the story. I mean, if you play in a band for 17 years, uh, things will happen. You know, it's like a marriage. You know, sometimes you get divorced, and uh, 17 years is a long time. There's been many members coming and going in the burger. You know, so. I'm a new member and, you know, there was a guitarist before me and so it's just uh, things that happens in a band, so it's, you know, yeah. a normal thing in a band. No animosity, you're still, you're still friends with them? Uh, we haven't really talked, but <laughs> you know, we don't want to badmouth anyone, so. Mm, cool. And, um, like, following on from that, how is it like, how's having like, those two members gone affected the writing and recording of the new album? Uh, I don't think it has affected it at all. I mean, we three is mainly the ones that do most of the work anyways. Uh, so, no, we work very good. This is probably the best work we've ever done together. Um, you know, we just meet up at Shagra's place and then work together and then show him the riffs and Shagra has the keyboard riffs and then we just put everything together. So it's been, yeah, very smooth and not too far <laughs> away from what we've always done. So. Um, on that note, could you like tell us a little bit about the new album? Because I, I thought there was a concept um, behind it, but I was wondering if you could like verify that. If there's like what, what were the concepts and or inspirations like with the new album? Uh, there's not really a concept album. Uh, we wanted to like you know have something that states of something new and uh, rebirth and. Uh, we used to have uh, on the previous album we had a concept, so for this album we didn't really want to have any concept. Uh, so Silenos was writing lyrics that dealt with Alistair Crowley and uh, a lot about stuff that's happened in Dimmu Borger. So I mean Dimmu Borger itself is a big theme uh, in this uh, album, but it's it's not really a concept album. So yeah. <laughs> um, following on from that, actually, the album's title is Abrahadabra. And that's from an Alistair Crowley, uh, he, he wrote, he kind of coined that term, so what's the significance of that? Is that like...? Uh, yeah, it's, that's a magical formula that he has that's, you know, representing a new era, a new world. And for us it was just natural to have a title like that because this album is, we wanted to do something new and we wanted to try out stuff we never tried out before. Yeah. And, um, we wanted to, like, it's with the three titles, you know, we always said, like, Entron, Darkness, Triumphant, or... So we wanted, like, something else than three words, so it was just a perfect name for this for this album. So. It seems, compared to your older albums, like, the songwriting has almost become more... Um, the word would be... I don't know, it's, it's evolved a lot, and it's become even more complex, I suppose. <coughs> and is that... Is that a result of the, the members being gone, or is that like a progression as songwriters? I think uh, as a musician you evolve a lot, you know, for each album, so it's just a natural process, but we also like worked very, very hard on this album. We could make a song and then we could go back and change it, you know, and then 
go back and change it again, you know, then start working on another song and then go back to the other song and change it again. So we had, this is the most serious work I've ever done with uh, in, in this band. So we worked very hard and, you know, a song isn't finished before we went to the studio and this album is a proof of that. We, we, we changed everything to the last day pretty much, so, mm. yeah. And um, also, I've, I've been aware of a lot of people having a go about Dimu Bolli. They're like, they're saying, oh, you're not pure. Yeah, always. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, you must be used to it. So yeah. It seems kind of unfair. But there was no, but that's happened. I mean, even before I joined Dimmu Borger, I heard lots of bullshit about Dimmu Borger, so that's always been like that. So <laughs> it's nothing new. <laughs> you don't have any message from these people who are saying that you're not like your old stuff is best. Yeah, but uh, I remember before I joined Dimmu Borger, they said, ah, this this is keyboard. This is not black metal. And it's <laughs> like, ah, clean vocals. When Vortex did the clean vocals, ah, clean vocals. This is not good, you know. So it's it's always stuff like that, you know. So. Yeah, you just have to take it as it is. And people are entitled <laughs> to an opinion, you know. So. Yeah, of course. But you weren't one of those people who were saying, oh, I know there's keyboards and stuff. You no, I've always yeah. been a fan of keyboards because I think it creates a certain atmosphere. Yeah. Dimmu Borger without keyboards is basically, you know, it's that's the most important thing in Dimmu Borger is the you know, ground yeah, feeling absolutely. and the keyboard. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I've always been a fan of it, and especially for Dimmu Borger. Yeah, for sure. And you used like a live orchestra, which is kind of, I mean, you've done it on a couple of albums before, but this is like, it's so, it's very striking. Um, but I was wondering what the attraction of like the kind of classical genre as a whole is to Dimmu Borgia's sound. Because some bands, you know, you flirt with classical, you have a little bit, but Dimmu Borgia is like completely, throughout the whole album almost, there's just like these amazing classical um, lines behind everything. So what's the attraction? Because you think metal and classical are not really compatible. Yeah, I mean, there's bands before that's tried out classical music and put it on top of their music, on top of their heavy metal music, but it doesn't really work out. And I think like if you play very like trashy, fast stuff on guitars, then it doesn't fit the music. But Dimmu Borger is more like epic guitar playing and or like slow guitar, and mm -hmm. then it fits the, with the orchestra on top, you know, and then they just combine it. And, I don't know, for Dimmu Borger, it's, we always use keyboards and keyboards and orchestra is not really, it's pretty much the same thing, yeah. you know, you have the strings on the keyboards and you have the violins, you know, so pretty much walks hand in hand, so yeah, for Dimmu Borger it's always worked, so I don't, I don't have an answer, it's just <laughs> worked. Um, on that note, could you tell us who like your the most heavy metal classical composers are, like your kind of your favourite, the, like, the coolest ones? Uh, personally, I, I mean, Tchaikovsky has always been pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean, I like a lot of them, you know, Beethoven, Mozart. They're not really metal, you know, no. but no one is, you know. Even in terms of attitude or something. But I always think like the movie, you know, like the Omen oh, yeah, film yeah. music and stuff like that has been very good. Mm. And, you know, Star Wars and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, so. cool, like John Williams and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so gonna ask also what are your plans for the future because people wanting to know in fact you can see here you are gonna play in London oh there it is it is, <laughs> it is confirmed well like what, what else do you have stored uh, in store for the band here? Uh, yeah we have a tour in Europe and we have a tour in uh, America this year um, then we, yeah that will be the main thing now and then in the summer we'll do a bunch of festivals and I don't know how many it will be because they're not all booked but it's gonna be a busy year and we're just gonna grab everything that's there, so it's gonna, yeah. Yeah. Future will tell. It's a bit early. We're still in the promoting process sure. here, so. Um.